some really interesting research that came out a little earlier this year um, that specifically was able to map a a kind of a, a human face, and yeah. they could, and given a, a mouth input, like you know, you me talking in front of a webcam, they could map my mouth and my facial expressions and the way my jaw moved. Uh, maybe not mine because I have a beard and it's kind of messy, um, <laughs> but to you know, to Donald Trump or to Alec Baldwin or to some other you know public of, uh, official, and yeah. and that's kind of going to be the, the the fake news of the future. It's not you know somebody some fake quote, but it, it's a fake news clip and where they've, they've synthesized somebody's voice and face. And th that's what you see on, you know, going viral on YouTube or on, on Twitter. It, and it's completely fabricated and almost indetectable. Yeah. So I guess trust no one is yep, like this. Yeah. We talked <laughs> yeah, about this like recently. Yep. James Vincent. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. There's no beards there. Oh, yeah, no, there is one beard, but not, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. But the beards always look a little wonky. Yeah. They'll Jeez. get there. They'll get no, there. Oh, so. yeah. I, I'm, I have no <laughs> doubt. So now it's going to be use encryption, change your passwords often, and grow a beard in order to yes. protect No, it'll yourself. be record yourself 100% of the time so you can prove at that particular moment you didn't actually say that thing that that video has you saying. Yeah. Active I don't like this future at all. <laughs> I don't like it either. <laughs> well, you have also been covering open AI since its inception. It's been a little over a year. Uh, explain a little bit about who founded open AI and how it's evolved over the past year. Yeah. So uh, it's one of those research shops that I keep pretty close tabs on because it has a lot of money be behind it. It was, you know, kind of co-founded um, by I mean, the money comes from Elon Musk and from Sam Altman, but also from Peter Thiel and um, a, a bunch of other investors, you know, like Amazon Web Services behind them. And they have a bunch of, you know, uh, corporate partnerships and that they have been grabbing some like really great research talent from all across from, you know, their head of their research director um, comes from Google and, and some people that I um, have have followed come from kind of all all over the industry, and they're exploring the big problems like what ha like can we find a if there is some like malicious AI manipulating the internet how would we find that that's one of their big research problems. Um, they are they just released this kind of uh, big software that that lets AI kind of control a computer the way a human would. So it, you can teach it to play almost any video game or, you know, input text or code. Um, so they are really kind of pushing the, the, the research barriers, but they're, they're dedicated. And I think this is a, a its creation is a trend in the field is it's all open software. So they're, they're publishing all their code when it's, when it's done. Um, they're creating open tools for researchers. And this is kind of a, another tale of 2016 where it's like the, the year that kind of openness and the researchers, the academics won, um, where, you know, Facebook and Google and DeepMind and OpenAI are all open sourcing their image recognition software, their, you know, text understanding software, uh, 3D environments, and uh, and tools. So like the one on the screen right now, um, they're one of the researchers at OpenAI, Ian Goodfellow, um, has been doing a lot of work on adversarial examples. And that's kind of a word for um, data that you would force, that would force a, 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 an AI algorithm to do something wrong. Um, so, you know, a, a crude example of like, you know, possible in the future is you, stip, you slap a QR code on somebody's back and uh, a self-driving car would go right through them. It would, wouldn't see them at all. Um, so they released a, you know, kind of first pass at a tool to make sure your algorithm, your AI algorithm isn't susceptible to these adversarial attacks. And if it is, it helps train against that. Um, so it, it's, they've been doing a lot of super interesting work and I think they're just kind of getting started. They've been hiring a lot of people. They've been setting their research goals. Um, and I, I'm excited to see what they're going to do in 2017. Well, it's, it's amazing that they, you know, that they've thought of all of those things and they need to be thinking about those kind of types of yeah. things because we hear about, you know, just, just recently Uber, uh, there was a flaw in their algorithm that they admitted to in their self-driving taxis where they were, uh, I guess, turning, doing uh, right hook turns wrong into the bike lane and endangering cyclists. So it, is it a matter of real worlds? I mean, 
practice? And when it comes to uh, self-driving cars, are we, do you, do you see like a danger in that? Because we can't test self-driving cars unless they're really out on the road, but it's very different than testing AI in, you know, Google photos and making horrible mistakes, like misidentifying, you know, a gorilla as a, you know, an African-American person. That was horrible. Yeah, which but, happened this yeah, year. Yes, yeah. which happened, yeah, this year or last. That was horrible, but no cyclist got run over with a car in the process. Right. Yeah, and I, I think that that is kind of what Google DeepMind is really focused on, which is Alphabet's, uh, you know, kind of AI research lab. Um, and they are super focused on testing AI in like in games. Um, and so they did a lot of the early work, uh, you know, beating Atari games. And they, of course, had the very publicized win over Lisa Dahl, um, uh, with AlphaGo in, in the Go game. Um, and, and now something that they just released uh, earlier this month was this entire 3D environment that, that, AI agents can explore. Um, they've also been doing some stuff on like the, the game Doom, which is kind of creepy because it, like it's like this AI gunning people down. Um, nice. But they their idea is that if you first test AI in a 3D environment and it can learn to navigate a world and it can learn to you know look around, avoid danger, not knock into things, um, then it'll be a pretty good analogy for when you set this thing. In, in the real world. If you can simulate a world, it can kind of work in the real world. And we, there, there's been some proof that that can happen. There was a paper that came out last month where the researchers, um, they built this kind of 3D world for a drone to fly through. And it was kind of like a virtual drone. And then they put that same algorithm in a real drone and it was able to fly around with like amazing accuracy and like go down hallways and everything like that. So it was kind of the virtual world is compatible to the real world. It's just a matter of of getting it to the the, the level where you're comfortable that it can it can you know navigate and then testing it um, without any you know chance of people being harmed. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's something where nobody has gotten hurt yet in a self-driving uber but there are other self-driving cars on the on the um on the roads maybe that's something that we should be looking at i mean there's so uber has like this intense uh, research group behind it so does google but i mean what about the other didn't the uh, the state of california say that there are 20 other companies that are t testing self-driving cars like I i'm more concerned about you know like the startup that's using like bootstrapped open source technology to um, you know, that they might have not have the, the most rigorous testing capabilities and they're putting self-driving cars on the road because they filed a $150 permit. Um, it, it's, I mean, Uber, I don't think is kind of like the, the biggest concern right now. Um, because they do have such massive, they have so much to lose. I mean, if they, God forbid, kill somebody with one of these things, I mean, it, it's humongous versus kind of like a, a startup that, that, doesn't have, you know, tens of billions of dollars um, that they are that they kind of have on the line. I mean, it, it's it's a tragedy no matter who gets hurt and by what. Um, but kind of just speaking as a in in the general idea of, of who has more to lose, it's Uber. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's talk a little bit more about uh, that idea of fooling the machine. Uh, you wrote an excellent pop sci piece on this. Talk a little bit about. Uh, I guess what some people are calling AI hacking, the, just just the ability to trick it uh, for malicious purposes. Yeah. So this has been demonstrated in, in, in a few things in, in audio and in images. And basically it's they, they, these researchers, uh, the, one of the kind of the, the biggest ones that's looking into it is Ian Goodfellow from OpenAI. Um, they found that about that the, the algorithm kind of relies on about 4% of the pixels of an image to tell what it is and to make a decision. And those, I mean, a, it tell, it's more than 4%, but it's a, there's a crucial 4%. And he found that if you can alter those, um, then you can, uh, that would be imperceptible to the human eye, and it would trick the algorithm into classifying a, you know, a school bus as a duck or something like that. Um, so it has all these implications in, in terms of, you know, self-driving cars in terms of facial recognition, you know, guarding a building or something like that, um, you know, 
check scanners, every, anything that uses a, a camera and some sort of AI to, to identify somebody um, could be potentially hacked if you have certain um, knowledge of, of the, the algorithm being used. Another one, which is potentially a little bit more disconcerting, um, is that there was a group that was able to do this with audio. Um, and it, the, they, I think there's a, a sound on that uh, in that article, but you, it plays like white noise. It just sounds like a and it can activate either Siri or the Google Assistant at the time it was Google now. Um, and it could make it go to a website or execute a command or something like that. So the, the researchers were saying that one of the attack vectors is you play this noise on NPR and suddenly, you know, 10,000 phones are going to malware.com. Um, and it's all because these things are based on um, artificial intelligence algorithms that haven't really thoroughly been vetted as an attack vector for hackers. It just seems, you know, it, it's just something that people haven't really thought about. It's so new and it's being rushed into products because that's kind of the, the, the best way to deliver value. Um, but it, it's something that we need to be looking at and making sure that we understand um, before it gets exposed to people and before, you know, people are able to force our phones to kind of work against us. It seems like fitting uh, to be the last story. Uh, tell us about the glasses that you wrote about that are uh, able to steal your face. <gasps> yeah. So uh, your, your your precious face is, is no longer yours. Um the, it kind of goes on the on the same idea. So, it, so it, when in facial recognition, um, kind of the the that big four percent that I was talking about earlier is mostly around kind of this area. It's like your your eyes and your brow. Um, so the the researchers at Carnegie Mellon figured that if they had sunglasses, it would kind of do the same you know, would cover that and be able to obscure it. So th that pattern that you see on the glasses um, actually would is enough data when look, uh, when viewed through a, a camera to swap my face or the researcher's face with, you know, Scarlett Johansson or um, any or Carson Daly or, or anybody. Um, so as long as, you know, that the facial recognition was was trained to identify that person. Um so it kind of shows, and this is a real world example. This is, you could do this. It's a, they tested it with a very popular facial recognition algorithm. And it was, it's this thing where if, if that re algorithm was used in some sort of like building security and you walked up with these glasses, it would be tricked. Like it, it's, that's it. Um, so it's a very real possibility that these things, uh, can be attacked and, and made to do the wrong thing. Um, and it kind of goes to show that I think the larger um, point for people who might not be super interested in, you know, how algorithms work, they just want it to work, um, is that these things aren't as smart as we think they are. Um, they are, they, they're just kind of drawing a best fit line through some data. It's, it's a, a bunch of math that is no more kind of, uh, sentient or conscious or willing to, or able to catch its own mistakes than, you know, your, your keyboard, your iPhone, a typewriter. Um, that, and so it, it's, we're not at any level where you need to worry about AI yet. You need to worry about it messing up or being dumb enough to be tricked before, you know, you, you worry about it taking over the world.